Do what now? I'm over here now. We moved everything. Because we started doing them like this and the people liked it. For phones that have been dropped in water, maybe invited into a pool, they should definitely not be put in rice. That is a common misconception, but I don't believe there's truth to it. Or maybe there is. I don't know. I've never dropped a phone in water, um, so I've never had to bathe it in rice. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about the V6 of the Intune device migration tool. Notice we took tenant to tenant out of the name. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that, show it to you, um, and we'll see that. Did you drop your phone in water? We got to get you some rice. Okay, so the time has finally come. Let's look at, oh, that's not what I wanted to look at. Here it is, the Intune Device Migration V6. And we're gonna make it public, folks. We're gonna make it public. Uh, change visibility, that's the danger zone. Change to public. Uh, I'm gonna make it public. I have read, I understand it. Make it public. Okay, that is, uh, should be public now. Um, public, yay, everyone gets it. Okay, so um, I'll put the link at the end. Um, so let's talk about, so some of the big changes in this um, are we're done migrating user data, right? Whether it's through the blob storage or locally on the disk where we had to stage it. Um, and, and big shout out to the Discord community. They gave us so much feedback and asks for things or try this or have you looked at this? So a lot of things went in here. So one of the big things is how we deal with the user data now, right? There's an updated process for it. Uh, we're basically, we're capturing the original user information when we run start migrate, we get that SID. Um, when the device leaves and enters the new tenant and the user first signs in, we uh, capture the new SID and then uh, there's in the final reboot, which is called final reboot, we change the ownership of that profile uh, with the new SID. There's a lot of registry cleanup that happens and we're going to get into it when I go into the scripts in detail in the next few episodes, but it works really well. We don't have any remnants. We don't have those weird concatenations on the username. So um, seems to be really solid so far. We're happy with that. Uh, something else that changed is uh, the BitLocker, right? So BitLocker now has an option to either migrate or decrypt because before we were just migrating the key. It was its own task that's been consolidated, which I'll show you in a second. Um, we're still using the settings JSON um, to store everything. Uh, a big change for logging is we're now putting the logs in where the Intune Management Extension logs are. So see Program Data Microsoft Intune Management Extension logs. Um, so you can capture them right from Intune, which is nice. A lot of this is the same. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Oh, lock screen. I didn't add a note about it, but uh, I'll show you. Um, we have a, let's download the code. There are three things I want to eventually do that we're currently working on. I'm working on these with the team. I was really rushing to have them done now, but I think it's important we have a really solid way to do the migrations and we're gonna add these hopefully uh, soon. Hopefully it won't be much more. I I'd like to do it within the next month. So the first one is log analytics. Um, we wanted to be able to, as we're writing the local host, writing the logs, putting them, even though we're putting them in um, the Intune Management Extension area, we wanna be able to also cast them out to a log analytics workspace. That way uh, you run that in Azure in real time, you have start migrate logs, you can see all the devices and what steps they finished. And if something failed, it'll help you see where it failed. Um, so that'll be cool. The second thing, I hope it's here because I keep pointing here, is the enhanced end user experience. We put this wallpaper in as an option for you to set something to signal to the user that, hey, something is happening. Um, what we're currently working on is something more embedded and dynamic, right? So some ideas are um, uh, a window that's kind of full screen during the migration. So users can't get in 
Um, there's some great stuff online about this, and we're pretty confident we could adapt it to our solution. Another one would be something interactive. So yes, we want to make the start migrate available to the end user for them to start it. But after that, uh, you don't always get the notification. So what we want to do is put some kind of interactive window to basically let users know, hey, uh, we're going to migrate your PC. You know, you ran this program. You can click restart now or it's going to restart in interval, right? Maybe 15 minutes. That might also help us for organizations who want to push this as required, um, but still don't want to abruptly, you know, don't want to interrupt the uh, end user's productivity or work. Um, and the last thing is the SCCM client handler. So we currently have solved for the hybrid or dom domain join piece that's built into the script, um, where basically it checks if your domain joined. And if so, we can leave the domain in addition to Azure, but a lot of folks are coming from a co-managed environment. So what we have now in testing is uh, a handler for the agent. So if we see that SCCM client is installed and there's an agent there, we can essentially nuke it um, before moving it over. These are all things that also help us make this not just a tenant to tenant migration device tool, but a true Intune device state migration, right? Uh, domain to cloud, hybrid to cloud, SCCM to Intune. So be on the lookout for these because we're actively working on them now. Okay, so start migrate. Oh, look how professional we are. Um, so right off the bat, we're collecting our variables from the JSON. Um, like I said, we've changed the log path. Um, so a lot of this is the same, except for we're not checking the disk for space. We don't need to do that. There is no pre-migrate. It actually starts with start migrate. Um, a lot of this is the same. We are capturing more information um, for the user. We're writing that to the registry. Everything we capture, we, we write to the registry. Okay, taking a look at the settings. Um, the settings JSON is pretty much the same. Um, you can leave the group tag empty or add something. Um, we added the we added an area for lock screen. So what we're doing is um, in the script and start migrate, we're setting a temporary lock screen that you can customize to show um, show your company. Uh, name, migration is in progress, showing if you want to put up a phone number, an email for help desk, that's been pretty popular. Um, and then lock screen two is the corp lock screen that we're setting back after the fact. So that kind of helps with user communication. Final boot is where most of the work was done. This is where we are um, essentially, we're getting all our reg values back uh, for the user SID, the username. We delete AAD broker. Um, plug in the folder that was causing all the trouble and then we change the ownership of the uh, original user profile by invoking a sim method uh, after that we do the, the, the thing that took the longest was scrubbing the registry um, for the original username to find sub keys and, and, and subfolders in there and, and delete anything that was related to that so shout out to Jesse for crawling through that for us and he came up with this pretty in-depth script that takes care of that. And this works really well and seems to be the piece that makes it work, right? Um, of course, uh, once we put the settings back, we're actually gonna set uh, our last tasks. Um, we have one consolidated task called post-migrate. Post-migrate does three things. Um, it sets the primary user, it applies a group tag if applicable, and it deals with BitLocker. So just to kind of scroll through some of it. So we do authenticate to graph. And then what we do is we actually use this new Boolean value called use group tag, false, right? So the way that works is if we can get a group tag from the registry. Now going back, this either came from the old tenant or if there was nothing in the old tenant, we would get it from the settings. If nothing is there, right, we just, uh, we don't change it to true. We just go down and say it's not found and then we're not using it and that stays false. Um, so this means that when we go to set that, we're only setting it if it's true. So that the final output, if you don't wanna use a group tag, it's there and it skips it. Primary user is the same, the way we set that. Um, down here, 
the BitLocker deal. So we're, we're calling BitLocker method from the settings here, BitLocker method that could be migrate or decrypt. And what that's doing is if it's migrate, it's doing what we did before. If it's decrypt, we're actually decrypting the volume, right? Um, or else if it's not set, we're just going to skip that all together because some folks didn't want to touch that. And that's the end of that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty efficient in the way it deals with these things. Now, autopilot registration is still its own task just because of the length it takes to do longer. Um, but yeah, between middle boot and final boot, those are really the only reboots now. And they happen very quickly because there's no restore. All right. So this took a lot of work. Giant shout out to our Discord community. Several members uh, contributed feedback by testing versions 1, 2, and 3. And 4 and 5 never made it to GitHub because that was just me trying to fix stuff. But um, all the contributions were super helpful. Ideas from how to do certain things to features that should be added to just a lot of things that were annoying and didn't work. So hopefully we fix that. Um, you know, so let me know what you think. Uh give it a shot maybe i'll put the url here that might be cool to put the github url like right above my finger too high up i don't know we'll see um let me know what you think talk soon five four three